Uh, is Dele there right now so that we'll go to him straight away? Dele, are you there? Yes. Okay, Dele. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you for staying with us. Thank you for your patience. Let's get started. I can take it that that white smile uh, is a smile around the payment system that has gone live. It went live last Thursday. As an export expert, and for those of us that watch the space, how did you really feel, at least since after the African Continental Free Trade Area uh, went operational since last year? Wamkele and his guys, Africa Exim Bank, our own central bank, our own central bank governor is the chairman of the governing council of, uh, of um, yes, of PAPS. You know, so how do you feel, really? Great. I think it's a very important milestone. Um, I've been experienced myself challenges with payment within the African continent, uh, shipping to Cote d'Ivoire, and really, really find it tough to get payment into Nigeria. I think it's a very, very important milestone. Um, so, what we should, for me, I think a major problem has been solved <laughs> the fact that now we can easily pay across Africa. So the other issues around logistic distribution, movement of goods, uh, are what we now have to work on. And of course, what the um, the, uh, the head of the agency in Ghana, Wankele Mele, said about the fact that um, there's still an issue around the tariff, tariff issues among different countries, which also explains the reason why we really have not started trading. But the fact that the payment, because the payment issue really transcends trading goods, including trading services. And even for companies, you know, after the session on Thursday, I did a, I normally do a webinar on Thursday in the evening. So I did the usual webinar. So I talked about it. And I realized that a number of people who have had a lot of issues. So around that, I just begin to see a lot of possibilities. So what I see is the great possibility that this payment platform is going to bring to trade in Africa beyond just trading goods particularly for trading services and even for other businesses who want to do business in another part of Africa and have an issue with payment, other businesses. Mm. Okay, Dele, you know what? For those that are watching us and perhaps don't also understand the, the furore around what is going on right now or the too much grammar or, you know, what are these people <laughs> saying, you know? Please try and break it down. What does the pan Okay. African payment and settlement system, that is PAPSS. I guess we did a card on it, well, all you need to know, so my team should put that on the screen any moment from now, informing our viewers. What does all this right. mean uh, for a unified the, the, payment system in Africa? The PAPSS, Pam African payment system, a set system, a settlement system rather, basically enables an exporter in Nigeria to receive payment in Naira for shipment to other African countries. So when I ship goods to other African countries, the other, let's say I'm shipping to Kenya, the Kenyan importer will use shilling to pay through his own central bank. And I'm going to receive Naira in Nigeria as an exporter also through my bank in Nigeria. In simple terms, it enabled me to pay, to transact on the African country, uh, an African continent rather, using the local currency. So it eliminates I, for example, other currencies. For example, in Nigeria right yes. now, who are having challenges making payment for their import of goods, if they can find alternative source of import from Morocco, from Egypt, from South Africa or Kenya or any other part of Africa, might be able to even import at a cheaper rate by paying in Naira rather than seeking for forex from BDC, from IE window, from CBN, and waiting for such a long time to be able to remit all their obligations to their suppliers abroad. So what this is, is really a game changer for Africa because I remember when I interviewed Wam Kilimene, who is the after Secretary General, uh, after secret after yeah. Secretariat Secretary General, I interviewed him whether 2020 or 2021, I can't remember now. And I did talk about this payment system because for any trades to go on, there must be a payment system. What am I exchanging for? Okay, I'm exchanging this for that. What do you give me in return? Which is money and whenever there's money, there's payment. So this is a game changer really for Africa. With what you've just said now, that means for those that are involved in trade, you import goods or services, that means if you can get 
an alternative in other African countries. You don't need to go to the banks for the dollar, for the pound, or, or for whatever. For forex. Yes. So you can get the suppliers from other African countries, and you can pay with your own local currency. And the person over there gets the payment in his or her local currency. So what does it say now for the yes. yes? What does it say for the strength of our currencies in Africa? For the naira, for example, do you see the strength of the naira eventually when everyone gets to start using this being strengthened? Yes, because there will be less pressure on naira. There's less demand for foreign exchange. So CBN also now we have less pressure on the external reserve because now we can be effecting payment for our goods in local currency. Of course, the settlement at the end of the day will be in, uh, in USD, and that will be done at the level of uh, Afrexim Bank. Mm. But definitely, we expect that to reduce the pressure that uh, is currently on our foreign reserve, how much CBN have to use to be able to defend Naira. That is expected to reduce now because we are expecting to begin to trade in local currency. And um, for me, I think it's also going to stimulate a lot of trade in Africa, such that we now, like I said, begin to see possibilities within the African continent that we never even imagined before because there was no effective or efficient payment system that can get people to be able to get paid on time and in time. Remember that before now, if you are going to pay in dollars, you have a third country involved in that payment process. In fact, the CBN confirmed that the CBN governor in his presentation said that we are saving about $5 billion annually mm. that could have been used to pay a fees to different banks, corresponding banks that we're working with to be able to effect payment in Africa for different transactions, both for payment in goods and, of course, payment in service. So we expect some respite on the part of our external reserve that CBN is managing. Um, you know, that there was a pilot phase that was conducted with some African countries before this thing went on, before this was launched in Ghana uh, last uh, Thursday. Uh, for those of us that are watching the space, is there a timeline by which uh, it can fully commence? We know that a lot of banks are also involved uh, because from what you are explaining, uh, it means that PAPS, P-A-P-S-S, yes, P-S-S, uh, would like it would likely operate like the Nigerian NIBS, if I'm not mistaken, the Nigerian Interbank Settlement System, isn't it? Yes. Yes. With yes. Afrexim in, fact, in the center. We're going to be using the RTGS mm. as the because the the idea is for the switch national switch of every country to be connected to parts, so that since all banks are connected to the national switch, if the switch is connected to parts, then it becomes easier for payment to be infected from the bank through the RTGS to PAPS and from PAPS to the RTGS of another country and, of course, to the other party afterwards. So that's it. But in terms of when it should start, from what I heard, it's supposed to start immediately. Mm. And CBN government already encouraging banks to inform their customers to begin to consider using this for their payment. Uh, and for report also showed that about 12 banks in Nigeria are already connected. Remember yeah. the... the um, the trial run was done in West Africa, yeah, and Nigeria once. able to be among the banks, among the countries rather involved, and about 12 banks, uh, from what I heard, are already been connected. So the process will start immediately, and those other countries that are not connected now have been encouraged and implored to find to begin to connect that uh, with PAPS so that their own banks also can become connected, and it becomes easier to be able to pay to other countries in Africa beyond those that did the testing in West Africa. You know what, Dele, uh, what also came to my mind while I was uh, observing the launch last week in Accra, uh, Ghana, the exchange rate differences, you know, uh, between or among African countries, uh, f for example, will really bear the cost. Africa Exim Bank, uh, you know, because before, is Dele still there? Uh, we'll see, or at least was, yes, uh, was uh, going on. There must be a third party involved if you want to do uh, a business outside of your locality, you must exchange uh, at least to dollar or pound or whatever foreign currency, and that person gets it. So the exchange rate differences, really, how do you think it's, it will be handled moving forward? So, so if I'm going to export now, 
I'm, I'm, let's say I want to export goods of $10,000. Using the iron window, maybe say around 4.1 million naira or 4.130 million yes. naira if it's 413. Now, so there is a base currency really that is going to guide this transaction. So the other party also knows he's going to be paying $10,000 to me. Mm. But he's going to source that ten thousand dollar in Kenyan shilling. So he's going to pay Kenyan shilling. I'm going to get four point one three, four four point one thirty million in Nigeria. So there's a base currency from which I'm going to use for the transaction. Mm. So maybe on my invoice, for example, I will have the amount uh, ten thousand dollars, and I'll put the naira currency mm. four million one thirty thousand naira. Now the other party knows he's going to pay me one thousand and ten thousand dollars. But it's going to provide Kenyan shilling ten thousand dollar equivalent, mm. and I will get the naira equivalent of that money in Nigeria. The settlement among banks now is going to be done by Afrexim among the banks among the country at the end of the day, and that's supposed to happen eleven a.m. every day, eleven a.m. Uh, UTC every day. Mm. You know what's coming to my mind too as you're speaking. Uh, this should also encourage other or all of us as Africans to. To, to buckle up to increase our production capacity. Because if we increase our production capacity, hence the strength of our currency can, can, can be better than what it is right now. Because anything that also happens to another currency like the dollar or whatever, it makes us pay, uh, uh, yes, no. I, I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say, in essence, is that yeah. our currencies as Africans shouldn't depreciate so that we don't pay more for the dollar, for example, or for the pound. We need to produce more. We no, need we're to not produce paying for the dollar yeah. or pounds again. We're yes. using as a base currency for conversion. Yes, so you're not going to be paying yes. For I that understand again. what you're saying. In fact, the, the fees are expected to reduce significantly, actually. Yes. What I'm trying to say is that we should now produce more. This should be able to boost. African yes. production. Yes. If we are able to yes. produce more, produce both goods and services more, our currency we appreciate. Yes, yes, yes. Because we are going to be reducing the item we are importing, which is why I encourage the fact that it would be great for begin to see possibilities for import of the possibilities of importing their product from within the African, African continent. continent. And for exporters to begin to consider also shipping to other countries in Africa. I know for a fact that payment has been a major challenge. When I used to be in the bank, we used to have a product that enabled us to be able to uh, uh, pay within the Franco country. And then we had a product that if you are paying the Franco country, you'll be able to pay Naira in Nigeria and collect Sefa in, that, in mm. the Franco country in West Africa. And it was well, um, it was um, um, patronized. And we keep growing before we had issue with the Central Bank of the Sefa region. Uh, and the product has to be terminated. So I know there's so much possibility beyond AFCFT. So I think we should be thinking a lot beyond AFCFT. Probably also the informal businesses taking place in the region might begin to consider formalizing their transaction now, now that they can get a very efficient and cost-effective and, of course, speedy payment uh, process within the region. Now, for exporters that are watching us or for those that have exporters as relatives, what should they take note right now? With this PSS that has gone live, what should they take note as an exporter? What should you begin to do? They should, be, they should begin to look for possibilities of shipping their goods, particularly those into manufactured goods. Because if you check Africa, you realize that majority of African countries are either uh, low income or lower middle income. Basically saying that an average family in Africa are living on survival, spending about 50 to 70 percent of their income just on basic necessities of life. Those fast meat consumer goods have huge potential in Africa because, and with a population, with an average African country having population below 25%, being about 60% of the population, and with more than 60, 70% household consumption as a company of the GDP, we can say for a fact that Nigeria have a lot of opportunity within the West African country, within the Africa continent to sell, even before AFCFTA starts. The only challenge we now have to walk around is the um, transport of the goods. I know for a fact that a lot of logistic companies are working for shipment of goods by air, that's for cargo, and with what Nexim is working on around uh, the ship link, sorry, the sea link uh, operation, we expect, I don't know when that will start, but that's the last I spoke with a contact there. They're working a lot to make that happen such that we can even begin to ship from... Uh, 
Lockheed Yard down to the Atlantic Ocean and be able to ship with West Africa and Central Africa and probably Southern Africa. By that, if we're able to solve that problem, then we'll be able to take advantage that AFCFD offer African countries. Mm. So in essence, for those that are exporting clothes, uh, like my own local clothes from where I come from, Aquacha, we call it Aquacha, the white clothes from the so bottom. Yes, no. you should, if you look for other uh, uh, places around the continent, you can export, or even if you do cashew or you package whatever you package, you can export to those countries and you can actually get paid in Naira. Those people that can pay you in their local yeah. currency and you get paid here in Naira. Well, well, it? It's also important to emphasize that the import process and export process has not changed. The documentation mm. required, because CBN <laughs> is not saying, now that you're paying in Naira, you're not going to do documentation. The NXP required for export is still valid. The process of TRMS is still very much valid. The import rate is still very much. In fact, CBN in the circular to the bank said, Oh, okay. I think we lost Dele there. Thank you very much, Dele. Uh, thank, thank you very much, Dele, for uh, your contribution. Uh, that's the much we can take. Uh, the technology has done its, its best right now. Uh, so th I've been speaking with Dele Ayemi, but who is an export expert. In case you still want to understand more about this uh, payment uh, system, uh, you can find it on our youtube our channel moneyline with nancy uh, tv and you can also read it up uh, it was launched in accra ghana uh, last uh, thursday that's the much you can take on today's edition of the program thank you all for uh, joining us be the best you can be and be the change that you want to see i am nancy Najib. bye now